that the Lord has given to us, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, I want to welcome all of us to the house of the Lord this morning and to our online viewers. Welcome to the church. Feel at home for the new visitors. Feel at home. This is the place to be. And so, just uh, not to waste any time and do what I wish all of us to stand and uh, have a word of prayer. Can you let us all stand? There is someone at the back who is still scrolling the phone. Can you stand? Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, let's go ahead and we give uh, and our dear Heavenly Father, this morning we come before you with hearts full of uh, thanksgiving. We want to praise you and to honor you for being with us over since January. And Lord, it's another month, September. Lord, we've seen your goodness. We've seen your mercy. Oh Lord, we've seen your love. Oh God, never leaving us uh, even at any moment. This morning, Lord, we come before you, oh Jehovah, uh, with our broken hearts, with our worries and everything, Jehovah, we pray that Lord, even as we draw to the mercy seat, that Lord, you will uh, take off every burden that you might have, oh God, with us. This morning, Jehovah, Lord, we want to pray that Lord, your spirit will come and guide us in everything we will do, oh God, as we lift our hands in worship, as we lift our voices, oh God, in one accord, just to praise your holy name, we pray that your presence will be part and parcel of us, oh God. This morning we pray, Jehovah God, for those who are still coming. Lord, we pray that you uh, you quicken their steps, oh God, so that you might uh, join together, oh God, in celebrating and worshiping your holy name. We see no other God but you. You remain to be an everlasting and promise keeper in our lives. We bless you, God, this morning, and we honor you, Jehovah. We, uh, we our desire, Lord, is to draw to the mercy seat. Morning, we are here for you, Jehovah. May our reason today be a reason for you. May you come and dwell in our hearts this morning. May you come and lift every every burden that you might have, oh God. May you take off the sicknesses, the worries, oh God, and the discouragements. Even as we walk out of this place, oh God, may we walk out, oh God, as a blessed generation in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of God, we welcome you to reign in our lives. We welcome you to reign even in this service, oh God, because without you, Lord, Sisi Nibure, we thank you and we honor you because there is no other God but you. Lord, even as we uh, start our service today, we pray for every service uh, participant, from the worship team, oh God, to the elders, to the preaching, of oh God, to our gardening teams, oh God, and to, the, uh, to our online church, God. We pray that you take the eminence in each and every ministry. Bless you and we honor your holy name because there is no other God but you. May all the power, glory, and authority be unto you now and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray in thanksgiving.
Jesus, Lord, that from those I will weigh what you did. We believe in you, Jesus.
Thank you. 
two before we make that joyful shout. Do you remember the words of Jericho? What happened to them? It was just praise, shouting, and just like that, they, they came into destruction. Sing your in the count of three. I want to hear a joyful shout. So if you are visiting us for the very first time, I just want to see your hand in the hair. Thank you so much. Hey, we have a visit. Actually, there are two. Any other hand? Woo, that's nice. Yeah, we have three. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Welcome to our church. This is Nairobi Baptist Church, Kibera. We love visitors. Yes, and it's so it's an honor to have you today. When I saw Sifiwe, so feel at home, don't feel oh I'm a visitor that you're feeling no. Feel at home here. So uh, today you will meet with the representative after the service and we have our beloved Asha by the name, Cones. He's right there. You will meet with him after the service. He will show you where you will sit and have a cup of tea with him. Uh, and this is a church of choice. Vanessa Sifiwe. What fukuzi wa geni? Tunapenda wa to join to. So, if you don't have a church, this is a church of choice. You are so much welcome here. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, so to our announcement, our Berean Hawa continues every Thursday from 5.30. Yeah, and for the first time, Tamri Mwante Yanze, I came for one. Vanessa Sifiwe. Yeah, and it was a beautiful session, and I really missed prayers. You know, there is some time, yeah, we come to church, but you still miss, you want some prolonged hours for prayer. Silvio? Yeah, so this is the best time. When you talk a job, you're tired, come with your tiredness here. God at a refresh. Vanessa Sifiwe. And we have morning glory every Sunday at 8 a.m. But you can, uh, you can come earlier than that to intercede. Vanessa Sifiwe. And it goes on to 9, uh, to 9 a.m. Today is our gift Sunday since it's our uh, first Sunday of the month. I hope you've carried something extra in your pockets. Vanessa Sifiwe. Yeah, so I hope today you're going to embarrass the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And also we have mass wedding registration is in progress. Couples who haven't wedded in our church to register with Melen. Uh, Melen is our admin, so you will meet with her. Um, for the registration. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you desire to have a church wedding, to walk down the aisle, to wear that down, this is the opportunity. Hallelujah. Amen. And to our Badili team, they are graduating today. Hallelujah. Yeah. I can see them with beautiful shirts. Who's a gray? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'll have to organize with the director <laughs> at the back <laughs> to get one. Sawa, sawa. So today they are graduating. I know last, uh, last, last year it was a bit challenging due to COVID, but this time God has done it for us. See, that's something we should be glad to do. Yeah. It's such an honor to have this team graduate today. When I saw it, I Amen. Amen. And so here, the last one, I want to welcome our Papa. Thank you. When I see you, baptized by the Holy Spirit, not fire. Amen. When I see you, let's appreciate our daughter. I that was not better. Let's give a better round of Thank you so much. Honestly, we want to thank God for each and every one of you for coming. It's amazing to see all of you coming just in the presence of the Lord, just to sit and listen to God. Amen. Amen. And Pastor Mwen is in the house. Amen. But now you do not know another thing. Pastor Mwini's husband is in the house. Many of you know that we were praying for Daniel. Daniel was a bit of sick. And God has completely restored him. Amen. 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 We bless the Lord. It's good to see you, Daniel. Can the one who has been upstanding? Let's appreciate them. Thank you so much. These are my friends. These are God that I've worked with. Now, why we begin with Pastor Mwini is because... Our brother Daniel has always given an okay that Uyu So he's never disappointed when we first of all mention her. Amen? What a wonderful husband from heaven. Amen. Then we thank God and then for their our children, Sydney and Mwende. Let's appreciate them all. Mwende, Mwende was the protected one. We thank God for Mwende. God bless you. And uh, it's good to be here. They just came, they say, I get Pastor Mwini say, you know, Pastor, I want to come to church where I will feel the presence of God, where I, my, you know, the way she talked about just coming yesterday, I don't want to, I just want to come and be blessed. We thank God for choosing NBC Kibera for you coming because you are pastors here and your brethren here. The Lord bless you and as you sit down. Amen. Amen. To give you a time later on to greet us. I appreciate her once again and the family. And go to the your mind by your permission, just acknowledge once again our visitors to stand so that everyone sees them, isn't it? Yeah. Well, visitors, you've been told by our daughter Elizabeth that we love visitors. And of course, we will never embarrass you to come here or to ask you to say anything. But it's important that we acknowledge that you have come, amen? amen. By you taking a step of faith and standing up because we want to see you and declare the blessings of God. Will you, all the visitors who okay, came, please be upstanding. Sit down. You can see that Alice is standing. Let's appreciate them. Five of them. One as a few. Is it? Now you are not clapping as if you are very happy. Amen. Let's appreciate them once again. Karibuni Sana. We are a church that loves visitors. One of the things that we don't do and we refuse is to poach men and women from their churches. But we always say to you that if you had come, you have just come to worship with us, we want to send you with our greetings to you, to your church. Amen? Amen. But if you have been searching for, if you have been looking around and looking for a day that Pastor Moen has just said, a church that is exciting, that is vibrant, that is loving God, that is called a Bible-believing church, then your search has just come to an because in NBC Kibera we love visitors and that seat will always be there for you. You could get another one, but if you came first, you will find it. And so we want to welcome you. Feel at the feet of the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Is that true, church? Yes. Because we say that we are a church of? Yes. Not that we are better than the other churches, but when you come, going back is not easy. That we know. You can ask Daniel and you can ask Mweni, but more so if you can't believe them, then just Mweni, ask Mweni and Sydney. And you will know it is not easy to come and let's give them our, our last our clap offering. We'll meet with our brother Connors, be seated. Thank you for coming. And if you are coming, feel blessed. If you are going to go back to your church, send our Greetings. and the Lord will bless you. Amen.
Well, and uh, my sons are in the house. Is it not good to recognize them? Yeah. You know, the fruit of the womb. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I have my sons here. Of course, Don is always here, comes. But I have my son Fidel, my firstborn son. Uh, Fidel, can you stand up? Uh, stand up. Yes, that is my, our firstborn son Fidel. And the Lord bless you. Let's appreciate you. I, I was told that uh, I'll tell you this next time what he said concerning this church. I was told by, I think it was Don. I don't know who told whether the mother or Don. But a good thing. So that's our firstborn son. Our secondborn son should be on Gongro right now. That's why they worship. Amen? Amen. One has a few. Amen. There are two important people in our ministry this morning. Hallelujah. There are two important people in our ministry this morning. I say once again. Amen. Come on, feel good for them. For them. I'd like to ask these two to be upstanding. Maybe you come here as I announce. They will not be saying anything for now. I'll ask them to come and say something later on. But as I begin this announcement, I want to ask Gregory Anula. Hey, Shikalaba. That name is very hard for me. That's, look at that wonderful. This is what we are. Look at, look at that screen. Yes. Are they handsome and beautiful? I want to ask Gregory and uh, Brenda Anula to come in front here. Chepea Aste Aste, Julia Kambele, Donna Sikiwe, Amjawana Kwekwe Mskai Pamoja, Brenda Kwe Huku, Anula Kwe Huku, Mpaka Tare Tisa, Donna Sikiwe. This is uh, Gregory Anula, here in Nagini, Shikalaba. Shirakaba. Hey, Shirakaba meaning it is it the name is ready to divide. It is ready to do what? So ready to divide himself to this lady in the next few days. Brothers and sisters, we are pleased to announce the birth of marriage between Gregory Shirakaba Anyula and Brenda Kareki Amyonsu. If anyone in our midst has any legal reservations against these two individuals being joined together in holy matrimony, kindly inform the church from any day today, even right now, in writing, not in shouting, not in making unnecessary noise, not in more kind of justice, but in writing. By less than seven days from the day before the day of the wedding, which is on seven. So, come as Kwanzia Sasa, Pakatare Tisa, Nakama Zabakia Sikusaba, Pikatare Tisa, Ume Uome and Nikayo, Barua Yaksena Kwamba, Una Pinga, Harusia Hawa. Nakama Una Jua Kwamba, Uta Pinga, Basinia Nafra, Yetu Tangaza Pamarata to Nikwamba, Utanya Maza, Naunya Maze. Na kunyamaza, na kuendelea kunyamaza, mpaka wakati utakapotaka kuzungumza, utuandikie kitabu jahadibi. Wana sifiwe. Tumeendewana? Yes. That the only thing that you will do is to write a storybook. Amen? Amen? And so, this, we declare from this day, and we shall be doing this for the next three uh, Sundays. And we want to thank God for this, beloved. I did not introduce Brenda uh, Karegi. Amyunzu is a member of... Uh, Sita Moodley has a very strong relationship with Nairobi Baptist Church, both here and Gong Road. And so we thank God because the young men are bringing our girls here. Yes. 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 And we can tell you it is going to be another big wedding. Just like Sylvia. If you don't understand, ask Sylvia. We had a beautiful, beautiful wedding. Amen? Amen. Let's appreciate them as they go to sit down. I'll give them time to greet the last Sunday. Amen? And now, back to my daughter. Thank you, Papa. In the next, uh, give Papa a hand of clap. Thank you, thank you for that. 
Amen. And uh, to the next, we have a presentation from our beloved Badili. So I do wish to welcome Celestine and the team. Woo! Celestine, Badili. Discipleship and mentorship program, which end in the changing of the lives of those who have just finished their form for. We are glad we, we have been learning about how how to do daily Bible study, which has enabled us to know how to study our Bibles. We have also read through growing in discipleship program, which has which has two volumes, two book one and book two, which has enabled us to grow spiritually. And lastly, we have read through purpose-driven life, which has enabled us to know the purposes that God has for us and what we are supposed to do to please God. Lastly, Badili has helped us to learn, help, help us to learn other activities such as cake making and soap making. We are grateful, we are grateful to, our, to our committed facilitators who have stood with us all the way through, who are, we have Michael, Kelvin, we have Michael, Kevin, Ernest Mellon, uh, Pastor Perez and Pastor Musula, who have been of great support to us till the end. But it means change. And from this, we have, from this we have learned that change is a process. It takes place gradually. It's something that takes place continuously in our lives. Change has several, has several ways in which it takes place first. Change must happen. Expect change in your life and monitor the change that takes place in your life. Adapt to the change that takes place. Change. You have to change. And lastly, enjoy the change that has taken place in your life. And now our theme verse comes from the book of 1 Timothy 4, 12, and it says, Don't let anyone look, or look down on you because you are young, but set an example to the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. I know, well, I, I know I ask you all to put your hands together as I welcome my colleagues to come and perform my dance.
Lord, may you prepare us all together, oh God, just to listen and to, re to receive the word uh, with the heart of gratitude. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we give thanks. Amen. 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 Thank you so much once again, Dr. Elizabeth. Let's appreciate her once again. As she sit down, the Lord bless you and bless you richly. Nyoni makofi ya pande nje kutipigia ya pandani. Wow. One has last few. How about our Badili class of 2020? Let's appreciate it. This has been a great team, a wonderful team. We thank God because our Badili teams are being transformed. And we have some that have decided that our history will not be erased. Will step in a place of blessings, wait upon the Lord. And I look at this wonderful uh, that are going to graduate today, and I'm really thanking God for each one of them. In fact, the most amazing thing is that you'll find them in our Thursday prayer service. They are here. They are not forced to come, they're not told, but they are here. You come for the morning glory, and they are here because they understand the aspect of change. But daily. Thank you so much for the leadership. The Lord bless you. We will be enjoying more and more even today. Amen. 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 And uh, my name is Omsula. For those who are worshiping with us for the very first time, I am born again. I love the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, not because I'm a pastor, but because I'm called on this pulpit to proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm excited to know that He is. God who created me in his own image. Amen? Amen. Last, no, last Sunday I was not in. I was away but watching you. It's amazing. A powerful service. I was so excited. I was so blessed. And I thank God. Thank you so much Pastor Sulai for ministering so well. The Lord bless you and bless your family, your dear wife and your children. We thank God for you and the entire leadership of Nairobi Baptist Church. I'm so glad to know that we can't be away, but the church will continue to run because this church is not dependent on one, two, or three people. This church is dependent on the King of Kings and the Lord of? Amen. But I want to ask us to be upstanding before I come because this is a very sad story. This story of Amnon Natama is very sad. I'm a savior. For, his, for us to be excited, I want us to stand up, dance like David, Dance. So I want to ask all of us to be upstanding. And Those are the only people that I know who Jesus bila any share. Pastor 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 Isambele na mauti nyuma Pande zote huoni ime shindwa kuna nini Pesa hakuna mali umenya nganywa Wame kukimbia wateke mea Nakikia sauti kiliyota yesu
be well. Amen. Are they being well? Yes. You know the last time they sang this song was well? Zamani. But they're doing well, isn't it? Sasa, kapla niyanzi kuimba ubiri. Nataka tu kionjo. Nataka tu nini? Kionjo. Ya wimba mbao mefanya practice miaka mingi. Kionjo tu. Na nataka muwaze kwa nini. Nataka tucheze kidogo. I believe by Nelson. Kionjo tu. Kionjo tu. Kionjo tu.
And the next person that we see in this particular passage of scripture is Jonadab. And Jonadab is a cousin to both Amnon and Tamar, and of course even Absalom, that we see at the end of this reading. And the story that comes out of this passage of scripture is very, very sad, that happens almost all over the world. And even as we sit here today, maybe it happened a few minutes ago, maybe it happened yesterday, someplace, somewhere, on the globe, this thing has happened. It is a sad story that may even happen in our midst. And I want us to go again, the style of Nairobi Baptist Church, Kibera, to go through scripture where we read together to understand the background of this story and see, uh, seriously and briefly look into some of the uh, studies out of this uh, particular passage of scripture. The reading was done quite well with that. By the way, did you love the reading of Nairobi Baptist Church, uh, uh, young people? Yes. Now that reading, we have not gotten it from the internet. It is recorded by our media team and read by men and women of this church, our young people. Can we appreciate them? <laughs> and so I would like us to go slowly to understand the passage of scripture. Pastor Mweni, in this church we say the best, first of all, even if we don't preach, but we are able to dig into the word first, that people understand the essence of scripture, that we understand that which scripture wants to speak to us, because for us, that which speaks is the scripture and not the man. And so I'd like us not to go systematically as I explain. The Bible says, in the course of time, that's 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1. In the course of time, unknown son of David fell in love with Tamar. And Tamar, the Bible says, was a very beautiful woman. Her everything, the beauty in her would be well defined because even the Bible talks about it. It says, the beautiful sister of Absalom, son of David. And so, Tamar was not just any other girl, she was a beautiful woman. And the Bible goes on to say that Amnon became frustrated. Can you imagine? Amnon became what? Frustrated to the point of illness on account of his sister Tamar. For he was, Tamar was a who? She was a what? A virgin. She had never met any other man in her life. She had kept herself well. I suspect Tamar was a God-fearing woman. She had known that it was right and that it was not right. And we'll see it in scripture. And so for those who may not read or who forgot the reading, I want you to get the picture, and then briefly we shall finish. Says Tama was a virgin, and it seemed impossible for him to do anything to her because she was not a woman sold out to men. She was a woman who kept herself clean in the eyes of God. She was not someone to just go to. She was not a harlot. She was not a prostitute. She was not just easygoing. She was a virgin. She had kept herself well. And because of that, it was not going to be easy even for her brother to go to her and say, you know, I want you for a woman. It was going to be impossible. That's what the Bible said. It seemed impossible for him to do anything to her because if any man had tried to do this to her, she had remained firm and made it very clear that she wanted to follow the Torah, the word of God. One is what's a few. Do I have people in the church? Do I have young, young girls in the church? This is what I want us to understand. Verse 2, verse 3, the Bible says, Now Amnon had a friend. Amnon had a what? And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters in this church, every friend that you have in your life matters. Every friend in your life matters. We will know you by the kind of friend you walk with. The Bible says, and Amnon had a friend known as Jonadab, son of Shimea or Shammah. 
And Shama or Shimea was David's what? Brother. King David's brother. So Shimea or Shama was a brother to King David. The father of Jonadab. And the Bible says Jonadab was a very shrewd man. In fact, other script, other, other, other versions say he was a crafty man. In fact, when I think of craftiness, when you think of what the Bible called crafty, is the devil, the serpent, you know, being crafty. And the Bible says Jonadab, the son of Shimea, the brother of David, was a friend to Jonadab, to Amnon. Yet this man, the Bible is very clear, he was known, he was a crafty man. He was a shrewd man. He was an evil man. He was a man who would always give wrong advices. He somebody would push you into a pit. He was not a good friend. But this was the friend of Amnon. And so we will begin to see the picture and the character of Amnon. Because when you walk with me and I am a crafty person, chances are that you will be crafty or you are crafty. Yes. And so the Bible says, now Amnon had a friend named Jonadab. And I want you to remember all these people. Jonadab. We have now talked about Amnon number one, right? Yes. Then the next person was who? Tama. And then the next person is Jonadab. And then comes the father of the two, the fathers of the of these children. The, the first one is who? King? David. And his brother? Shimea. Are we getting this very clearly? Yeah. That when you go home, the scriptures are in your heart. And so the Bible says, Jonadab was what? A shrewd man. He was a crafty. He had come to Mkola. He had come to Ambae. And he was him to Kweli Daniake. He was not a character that one would want to associate with. But the Bible says, Amnon called him friend. And verse 4. Once we understand this, you can, I can say two, three words, and you go. And the Bible said, he asked Amnon. Who asked Amnon? Jonadab. Who asked Amnon? Jonadab. Jonadab asked Amnon and said, why do you, and this is where the aspect of the abuse of power comes in, why do you, the king's son, born away when daughter of Falme, born away when daughter of Chungaji, born away when daughter of ABCD, why do you, the king's son, look so haggard? Are you getting what I'm saying? What I'm reading? These are the questions that this guy is asking his cousin. Why do you look so haggard? Why do you look so confused? Why do you look so weak? Why do you look so desolate? Why do you look so mad? Why do you look so given up? Why do you look so thin? What is the problem? You are a son of a whole king of Israel. Why are you looking haggard? You are looking finished. You are looking hopeless. What is the problem? You have all the power that comes with a prince. Won't you tell me? Tell me right now. I am you. Tamar was also whose sister? Amnon's sister. Can you imagine? These are the things that keep happening. The shame that comes with it. He says, I am in love with Tamar. Because he wants to make it look a bit better, he does not say it at this stage, Tamar, my sister, but because he wants to hide it. And he says, my brother Absalom's sister. It was going to be very easy for Amnon just to say, I am in love with Tamar, my sister. And so what he does, he actually pets the relationship beginning from Absalom, not himself. You can see how shrewd, how crafty, how terrible we can be when sin seems to come our direction. Are you hearing what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters? Let's go to verse, verse 4, verse 5. And then when he listens, when uh, Jonadab hears this thing, he says, I have a solution for, for you. And he says, you are sick or you are ill. Jonadab, here. 
anamwambia kwamba is that your only problem if your problem is tama it's so simple be sick you are actually the hair of the crown throne your father will be concerned about your sickness the moment you lie down everybody will come to see you and the first person that will come to see you will be your father and immediately comes are you seeing how we make lie so sweet wakati baba yako atakuja mwambie kwamba mimi ni mgonjwa na niko na njaa njaa ya kutosha na mimi nataka nikule na sitaki mama yangu anipe chakula sitaki wafanyikazi wanipe chakula sitaki nataka tu dada yangu peke yangu aniletee chakula akiweke kwa mkono wake nikule kutoka kwa mkono wake I would like my sister Tama to come and give me something to eat. Let her prepare the food in my sight. I want to pick a kama nafanya nini? What to mean? Ko. Are you here more in this story you just want to read? No, 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 no. Because step one and from where do I preach at end? You are telling your father, unatia baba yako msuna. Omsuno na msuno msuno na baba yako alikuwa pia alikuwa msuno na ambia kuja Mimi niko na nja na mimi ni mgonjwa enda ambia Elizabeth my sister or Dina my sister ya kwamba aje mahali penye ako anipikie chakula nikiona nataka kukula hicho chakula kupitia kwa mkono wa wake you are telling who your father shamelessly because you know what is already in your heart you are not speaking what is genuine already you have schemed you have planned with a crafty man you know your intention so when you are talking in front of your father you know exactly the evil that is residing in your heart to speak before your father the bible says honor your father and you are yesterday we were reading this is the first commandment and when you follow this you will live long and here you are you have a, you have a deceitful spirit and he was throwing it towards your father and he says let her prepare the food in my sight so i may watch her nifanye nini watch her kwa kiswahili ni so that i may do what watch her anamwambia akuja pick niwe nikimuona hiyo ni tamaa ambayo imejengeka lust of the flesh inasema prepare the food in my sight so i may watch her and then eat from her So I'm not laid down and pretended to be ill after all those stories that they did. Because what we are saying right now is what the discussion is. We are going to get into the action. So I'm not they are right now they have skimmed what they are going to do, and now they are beginning. So I'm not laid down and pretended to be ill. He was not ill. When you hear pretending, that means he was not ill. And so he becomes what? Ill. And the Bible says when the king came to see him. The deceit started coming. The scheming of the deceitfulness that we go through many times started coming in the lie of the devil. When the king came to see him, Amnon said to him, "I would like my set apart to come and make some special bread in my sight, so I make it from her hand." Verse seven. David did not question or discern anything. The Bible says David sent word to Tamar at the palace. Because Tamar's place was always at the palace, the place of protection, the place that she kept herself well, and so the father is the one removing her out of the palace into the hands of darkness, into the hands of the enemy. Go to the house of your brother Amnon and prepare some food for him. Now the father was told, let him come and prepare some good bread, and as she prepares, I want to be looking at her. And as I look at her, I want to have to place the food in her hands, and I want to eat from her hands. And you're asking, was it David having a bit of some small wisdom and asking what is happening? Let's go on, verse eight. So Tamar went to the house of her brother Amnon, who was lying down. She took some dough and kneaded it, made the bread in his sight, and baked it. I saw Melan doing that in the office in in the kitchen this morning. You prepare. It is not easy. Preparing the dough is not so easy. Something that you have to do well. And she needed it and made good bread because she loved her brother 
unknown and she had respected her father and had come as requested so that she may be a good sister to her brother, kind to her sister and make sure that her brother will even feel the power of healing just because of the love and the assurance and the caring. She didn't know that this was a man who was full of vile and evil in her heart. And verse 10, the Bible says, verse 10, then Amnon said to Tamar, bring the food here into my bedroom. Chakula kete kuliwa wapi? Kete kuliwa wapi? Kwa bedroom. Bring this food here in my bed so I may eat from your hands. And Tamar took the bread she had prepared and brought it to her brother Amnon in his bedroom. Quickly, verse 11. So Tamar is obedient, doing it because she knows she's doing it to a straightforward young man. But when she took it to him to be to eat, what did she do? What did he do? What did he do? Do we do these things? Do these things happen? Do they happen? Yes. And I'm saying that, let's just read the story. He grabbed her and said, come to bed with me, my You know for me, I'll stop from the word my sister. I'll stop from the word my because my, the word my sister will judge me. How on earth do you think, do you even imagine going to bed? This is a sad story. This is a biblical story. This is an embarrassing story. It talks about things you don't want to say on the pulpit. But this is exactly what the Bible is talking about. It says, he grabbed her hand and said, come to bed with me, my sister. Spirit of lust. Let's go on. Don't, my brother, look at what this girl had been brought up nicely. I don't know that it was by her mother, Maka, or by her, uh, her father, King David. But at least one thing I know, her upbringing was good. She said to her brother, don't. My brother, she said to him, don't force me. Such a thing should not be done in Israel. Such a thing should not be done in the church. Such a thing should not be done by a man or a woman of God. Such a thing should not be done by anybody professing God. Rather than even some non-believers who not do even this kind of things. And she says, don't my brother, this is bad. Don't do it. Don't try it. Don't. She said to him, don't even force me. Such a thing should never be done in Israel. Because we know that the Bible is very clear for us to read Bible in Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 11. The Bible completely condemns any person sleeping with his sister or even his half-sister. The Bible is very clear in the book of Leviticus. And so, Tamar had known about this, that Israel was operating under a covenant of God. Tamar knew this very well. And many of us know where we are. We know we are believers. We know we confess Jesus. We know what is right. But we continue doing that which is wrong. Tamar knew what was right. I believe Amnon knew what was right. And he was reminding the brother, it is wrong. For Israel to be associated with this kind of evil. And you will begin to see explaining upon explaining. He tells her it is wrong that this can happen in Israel. Not in the kingdom. Not in the palace. Not in our location. It should not happen anywhere in Israel. Israel is the nation of God. Israel is God's own up when he talks about his eyes. Israel is a land that God honors so much. And Tamar is here protecting the nation of Israel from being defiled. He said, there's no thing of doing this. We are going to defile the nation of God. It must not happen. It must not happen. Don't do this wicked thing. He reminds her. If he was a man with ears, he's been told, what you are just about to do is wicked. And many of us, we scheme, prepare, plan to do evil. We scheme, but we are never even convicted and know that whatever we are just about to do is wrong. But Tama is preparing his brother and is telling him whatever we are about to do is wrong. You and I, and I don't want to be part of it. It is wicked. In Israel it's called wickedness. Verse 13. 
13. And she says to him, Amnon, you want to do this to me? Are you thinking about me? What about me? My image, my testimony. I have kept myself clean before God. I am virgin. I have honored God. Do you care about me? You want your satisfaction. You want your happiness. You want to feel good. What about me? He was talking to a man he thought was in love. He was saying, you seem to care and you think you love me, but you care about me. What about me? Where could I get rid of my disgrace? What she simply saying, I am a pastor preaching on this pulpit. What about me? What am I going to do with the pulpit? That's a sad story. Read every this is a very, very sad story. Very, very sad. He's telling her, where, where could I get rid of my disgrace? You are pushing me into all this. What am I going to do? How am I going to walk? How am I going to be fed in the palace? What about the name of our father? Where? But he goes on and says, but what about you? Are you caring about yourself? You are the crown prince. If our father was to die today, you are the one to take over the throne. What is going to happen to you? Because this is going to define you. You are going to sell your own inheritance, that which is of God for you. What about you? Can't you see what you are just about to do? The next few minutes is going to destroy the rest of your life. So the Bible saying, Amen. I can see the quietness, the seriousness of the word of God in us. Look at this woman, full of wisdom, saying, what about me? Where will I put my display? But if not even me, what about you? You hold serious stakes in this kingdom. You are the crown prince. Amnon was the firstborn of David. He was the one that was supposed to inherit the kingdom. The kingdom was going to come with a lot of things. But doing this was an abomination. That the moment you do this, you are not supposed to allow even to live or exist. So the brother and the sister say, why are you selling your inheritance? You will be like a one wicked fool in Israel. Look at this wisdom. It's, she's very honest. She's saying, you will be like one of the wicked fools. Not just fool, not just wicked, but you'll be one of the wicked fool. A fool because you know the benefit that comes with what we have as a family. You are just about to throw it because of your lust of the flesh, because of your foolishness, because you no longer care. But then she reaches a place, she feels like it's, it's okay. There's nothing I can do. I am cornered. She says, Fine, please speak to the king. Please speak to our father. And she knew. I believe she knew that the king would not accept because the king operated on the law of the Lord. Says, please speak to the king. He will not keep me from being married to you. What she simply said, if your heart is for me, let's legalize it. Let's make it legal. Let's make it right. Let's not fall, force or get ourselves into a similar situation that neither of us are going to be able to come out of it. So let's make it legal. Go speak to the king. Maybe he will not keep you away from me now that you are not seeing me as your sister. You are seeing my mother and your mother being so separate and therefore you have brought an empty enmity. You feel like nothing can happen. We can get married. Fine. Go sit down with our father and tell him, I do not belong to, I, we are not from the same mother and so I am in love with her. I want to marry her. That's what she's telling him. Let's legalize it. Let's make it right. Let's let everybody know. Let our, the, our father know this is in your heart. Let's walk in the light. Let's walk in the light. 14. Let's walk in the light. But what did he do? What did he do? Friends, when lust comes, when wickedness comes, when the devil comes, he comes with all fullness. He doesn't care about your personality. He doesn't care about your character. He doesn't care about your dignity. He doesn't care about your image. When the devil wants you to desire what he thinks he wants for you, he will push it. God 
always desires to give us the wisdom of the kingdom. The Bible says, but Ammon refused even to listen to her. It was like nobody was speaking. His desire was only one. I want you, I want you to come to bed with me. That was his desire. He had made up his mind. They had skimmed, they had crafted all these schemes and he had made up his mind what he wanted. And the Bible says, since, and many times men are since, he was stronger than her. And they were the only one in the bedroom. And I suspect the bedroom had been bolted. And I don't know how big the, the, where Amnon was staying. That even if she screamed, nobody was going to hear. And in any case, who was closer there? Maybe Jonadab had known everything and had sent everybody away to make sure that Amnon is having a field day of his craftiness, of his foolishness. And so because he was strong, the Bible says he raped her. Whom did he rape? The sister. Tamar, the sister. Ah, verse 15. Then Amnon, let's look, immediately he raped her. You see, it was not love. Because love, if you love, you work out until you even agree. Even if it looks different, but you work out, you, you baby, let's one another until the last moment. But he did not want to listen to her. He refused. And so he forced himself on her and raped her. And the Bible says, immediately it finished the raping ordeal. Then the Bible said, then Amnon did what? <laughs> Friends, the devil has never been a friend. The devil has never been and he will never be. Every direction he wants to direct you is not for your good, it's not for my good, it's not for our good. It's for his good to destroy. As the Bible says, then Amnon hated her with intense hatred. Was it love? Was it love? No, it was lust. It was lust. He wanted to satisfy his ego. He wanted to satisfy himself. He wanted to be happy. And so the Bible said, in fact, forget about that Amnon hated her with intense hatred. The Bible said, in fact, he hated her more than he had loved her. I've been mean, going through some of this. Somebody who pretends that loves you, but in the reality they don't love you, they'll make use of you. And I talk to my, my young girls and say that, and even boys who are here, people who want to take advantage over you. And when they have achieved their goal, they have no interest for you at all. Trust you me. They will never have interest. Because all they want is to be happy and clap and say, you know, I'm a hero, I did it. The Bible says, in fact, he hated her more than he had loved her. And what did Ammon do? Ammon said to her, get up and get out. No more love. Remember, the sister was even talking to her earlier. There was conversation of being together. Can we stop this so that I go my way, you go your way? She said, you are not living here. I have to accomplish my goal. And the moment the goal is accomplished, Amnon said to her, get up and get out. Meaning, I don't want to see anything concerning you. Talk hapa. Now, wondoke. Simama na wondoke. Hatred. Here is now an innocent girl crying, trembling, shaking, having nobody to lean on, not knowing what to do. The Bible says in verse 16, let's go quickly to verse 16. No, she said to him, okay, now she's saying, we can't move that fast. It's not about you alone. It's about you and me. No, she said to him, sending me away will be a greater wrong than what you have just Dad, you said you loved me, but you are even exposing your hatred even more. Sending me away would be worse for you than for me. Can you see the wisdom that is coming from this girl? The wisdom that this young man should have said, by the way, my sister, what I've done is not right. There are many of us who have actually been Moscow, and you feel like I've done the wrong thing. What, what have I done? And so he's saying, let's not move quickly. Now that you have come to your God, that's fine. But sending me away, my brother, is not the solution for now. We need to sit down and talk about this because there's distress on you, there's distress on me. Let's talk about it. He says, sending me away would be greater wrong than what you have already done to me. But he refused again to do what? To listen. 
He refused again to listen. Let's move to verse 16, 17. He called his personal servant and said, Now where they are? He went, called his personal servant, they said, Get who? Uh, come and talk with me. Get who? Now she's what? Now what is she? She's no longer a sister. Get this woman out of here and bolt the door at her. Make sure she never steps here. Now she's a woman. Friends, somebody has said, when the devil gives you something, he will pay seriously for, for it. Get this woman out of this place and bolt the door behind her. Let her never come here again. She's no longer a sister, neither or her sister or Absalom's sister. She's now a woman. So his servants put her out and bolted the door after her. After her she was wearing what? A richly ornamented robes. You know, uh, there are some traditions, some cultures, there are specific clothes. If you wear, people will know who you are. Did you know that? Especially for ladies, there are some clothes you wear and they know the kind of woman that you are. In this aspect, she had put, a, put her, she had actually put on herself some honored robe that signified, that signified her virginity. That she was virgin, that she had kept herself clean, that she had been straightforward in the land of Israel. She had actually brought a lot of joy in her household, I suspect. That her, her father may have even respected her, but she has come to a place whereby this dress no longer has any meaning. And she's the one who is becoming now the most. And what she doing for this was the kind of a garment the virgin daughters of the king did what? War. When you go to Kiva, you go come and say, "Kocha, kwamba mto tumfan me kama mepa hizi guo manamme na juu kwamba huyu hajawe kuzo na manamme yoyo yoyote ilikuwa ni guo ya ishi ya ishi ma guo ni sawa sifiwe." Then verse verse eight nineteen. I told you I'll finish with just three points. Then I said, "Then Tamar put what?" And many of us know about ashes. Biblically said, "Then Tamar, I don't know where she got it. Put ashes on her head." Tamar put. Ashes on her head and tore her on, on, on the ornamented robes because she wanted her to expose who she was. She did not want to live a lie. She did not want to lie to the whole of Israel. She had kept herself clean before God. She had kept herself pure before God. And everybody knew that even by the dresser that she put. But she knew that in that bedroom she had been defied. She had been violated. She knew that she no longer held onto that purity. That she had wanted to hold on for the rest of her life and she said i am not going to be deceptive i am not going to lie i am going to lay bare before everybody that they, they may know that i'm operating in anguish and so the bible says she put on ashes as a point of you know when you think about ashes repentance fully you know feeling so low feeling um, I, I i don't want to express myself but feeling like here i am And she tore the ornamented robes to make everybody know that my virginity is no longer part of my life. Here I am. She put her hand on her head and went away weeping in anguish, grieved, tormented, tortured, feeling frustrated. What she had worked for for many years had been taken away in a few seconds. That her life was never going to be the same again. In fact, she's asking, how am I ever going to reclaim this that I had, that this, that this, this place that has been planted upon me? How will I ever reclaim my virginity? It can't. And so she was there weeping and feeling so upset, feeling so useless. Nobody to help her. Her brother Absalom is far away from her. She decided to walk there. In verse 20, the Bible says, her brother Absalom, upon reaching Absalom's house, her brother Absalom quickly looks at her and discovers something is not right. And he says, has that Amnon, your brother, been with you? Because she was screaming, crying, and said, be quiet. Be quiet, my sister. We know you have kept yourself clean. We know your passion. We know your desire. We know everybody in Israel knows don't keep these things to heart. And the Bible says, 
and Tamar decided to live with divine protection and he chose his brother as a place of protection because this woman was now operating under fear he doesn't know what was going to happen to him again he could not go back to the house of his father in the palace he went to live with his brother for protection and that's why he was the bible says he stayed there as a desolate woman someone who felt alone rejected nobody to lean to nobody to cry to she felt lonely in the in her, her brother's house let's go to verse 21 and 22 and we finish the bible says and the king heard of it when the king had all this he was only but furious the only thing that the father was is that he was furious nothing besides the bible says king david was only but furious but remember king david had part that truth of doing wrong just like the son had done wrong so i feel i think he was feeling guilty about what his son had done in verse 22 the bible says um verse 22 absalom never say a word I'm not either good or bad. He kept quiet, but the Bible says he hated who? Amnon because he had disgraced his sister Tamar. Friends, this is a story that if you listen to everybody, people look to that story, make that story, reveal that story, and finish there and pray and allow us to reflect on it. But I want us to look at just one or two things about this story and ask ourselves questions, then we pray and go into the um graduation of our sons and daughters here you know power can corrupt power is always corrupt it can corrupt any man any woman remember Jonadab said to Amnon you are the son of a king you gonna, thank you I see that you are the son of a king it is so painful saying what can you can have whatever you want and many of us believe that way we believe that if i'm a pastor i can get whatever i want i can just call and say bring me the mask and it will fly coming to my direction and some of us hold powers here and there look around people who have powers and power comes in many ways power can come economically Power can come academically. Power can also come spiritually. Why do you think I am more spiritual than other people and you misuse your spirituality to intimidate other people? Power. And my point number one that I want to tell you, brother, is that power can be deceitful. Power can be deceitful. Wherever you are right now, power can deceive you. Power can make you feel like you are the man or the woman of the times. But my brother, my sister, remember the time will come when that power will bring it down itself. Don't ever live on anything called power. Let power come to you by the grace of God. Mamlaka za mungu zinapo kunapo pa mamlaka katika maisha yako ukubali ya kwamba ni mungu anayo chupatia mamlaka na ujua mamlaka ni yake. The powers of Zote about the Napokea, Zina Toka Komejezi Mungu, Baraka Zote about the Napokea, Zina Toka Komejezi Mungu, Latino Napoka Katkoni Munguna, and other Kujibunia Baba Nikola Mamlaka, Nimepeo Mamlaka Mikola Mangu, Unada Kusukuma to a guinea, how can Ujani to a guinea? You begin to imagine I am the only one. Mutuan Sema Pamba Bangazi and Bona Pando Kenda Ju, you get to me of Panini. And as a church, I want us to learn from this story because you ask yourself, why would God allow this kind of story in scripture? Because God wants to, to teach us. Amnon was deceived by Jonathan. And he made him believe that you are the son of a king. You will get whatever you want. And yes, I can tell you, you can get whatever you want. That's true. You can get whatever you want. But remember the deceit of power. Because it is called deceit. It's a lie. And it must be a lie. It will bring you down. There is no time a lie has ever elevated itself. A lie always comes down. It comes crumbling. And then lie. And unknown operated on a very serious lie. The lie of sickness. The lie of seeking favor. The lie of seeking caring, yet in his heart, there was fire. 
there was hatred, there was evil, there was lust for destruction. When you go to the Zamba Bamako Hapa, Kama Mungu amekui, and kila moja wetu ambayo yuko hapa, all of you, none of us can say, kila moja wetu, in one way or the other, you have been elevated. If you are a father, you are a father to your children and a husband to your wife, and therefore you may be elevated slightly higher than the others. If you are a mother, you are the same. Some of us, even mothers or women or men that are here, we have house girls and house boy. You are elevated slightly higher than those people. We have a level of elevation at one place or the other. You know, for musicians that are here, you are elevated as one thing or the other because you can do things that some of us cannot do. And that can be a power that the craftiness of the devil can be used to come into you to bring deception into the work, the, the, the life of the church and destroy the entire church. Lie. Power. Power comes in many ways. I want you to know that power is deceitful. Look at our politicians outside there. All of them. All of them. Whether in the grouping that you like or you don't like. Look at all of them. When they are talking about power, it's about them, not about any other person. Because power is not others. Power is always about me. And so, let's learn. And we are by the grace of God. We are what we are because of the grace of? We are because of what we are because of the grace of? God and God alone. Let us not misuse the giftings of God. And some of you, many of you here, you may be looking down on you. Some of you are going to be ministers in the government of this country. Some of you from this church. May the grace of the Lord be your portion. Why is as a few? Some of you are going to be chief executive officers from Nairobi Baptist Church. May the grace of the Lord guide and walk with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. David says, as I read in the morning, that the Lord is mine. I shall not be one. And if I want, he will be the one guiding me towards the path of righteousness. We must understand the path of righteousness. Doing that which is right. Because friends, on this planet earth, life is short lived. It is not long. You may do all that you want to do, but it will come to an end. And some of you here are going to be big people, wherever you're going to be. You may not be seeing that, but I'm seeing some of us, God is going to elevate us. And when God elevates us, be careful about the power of deceit. And power of deceit comes from the devil because the Bible says he is the only that we know as the father of lies. Let's not take advantage. And number two, I want to begin from the negative. The power is deceitful, or the deceit of power. And then number two, why is it deceit, deceitful? Because when it comes, it comes with sweetness. I don't know whether it's good English, but the sweetness of power. Power comes with sweetness. Ukuba, nuta, nuta. My friend, of course, I keep telling everybody, and my family, my wife, I tell people, me, I know I've been called to be a pastor. Fortunately, unfortunately, where we are, all of us here, I am the lead pastor. And you begin to stand here and you feel like I am on top of the world. My friend, where? Pastors have come and? I am, we are not talking to the Pastors have come and? And some of them, even we don't know where they are going, some of them have not just gone, but they are going to hell. And yet they have been on this pulpit here, in here, out. Because of abusing the power of God. Power can be so sweet. And unless you discover that it, sweet, that power is deceitful, you will be tricked into that sweetness. And so Amnon saw the beautiful sister and so the sweetness of having her and feeling like, my, my, I have the power. I can talk to my father and he will command. I can command the service out. I can command my servants out. I can do whatever I want. I have the power. Power is sweet. Just ask these big people that you hear, the, the Rutos, the Rahilas, the Kalonzos, the Budavadis, the Mutmatiangis, ask them. They know how power is sweet. But you know, of them don't remember that power will be taken away. But it's not just about them, it's about them and us. The Bible is not warning them, it's warning us that when you begin to experience power kidogo, kidogo, power can be very sweet, 
Be careful when you are taking, you are understanding the sweetness of that power. Because power is sweet. Power is good. Power is not bad. And all of us should desire good things, right or wrong. All of us. Let's not come and demonize and condemn power. Power is good. But it must be used also well to the glory and honor of God. It's by the grace of God. You are the women's chair. Know that it's by the grace of God. Amen. You are, we have a director. You are the director of youth. Ukumbuke being a director of youth is not directing them, but it's ministry. It's by the grace of God. Wherever you are, Kumbuka, it's the grace of God. Kwa kila mmoja wetu, tufanya tuki kumbuka kwamba, tuko katika dunia ya nani? Si yako. Amen? So power can be so sweet. Let us be careful. All of us love sweet things. All of us. Tunapenda vitu amao ni vita? Lakini begin to understand nini vitamu. Because hana nini nyumbani kwetu tunakula pilipili na pilipili ni bado ni taa? Vitamu. But finally, we must also understand the consequence that comes with power. Somebody said, and we repeat many times, wherever we go, the choices have. And Amnon had made a choice. His choice was Tama. And not just Tama, but to sleep with Tama. Do you want to tell, have we read the Bible? Did Amnon rise to the kingship of Israel? Did he? He did it. Because of the wrong choice. Because consequences are not always wrong. But there are still choices, right? So the choices you make in life can be so, so painful sometimes. We have to be very careful wherever we are in our homes, in our offices, in our businesses, wherever we are. The choices we make in life have consequences. And I can tell you that there are godly, and godly consequences, they can be very painful. My friend, you and I cannot manage it. This is where I want us to understand these things. That the choices we make in life, young people that are here, how we handle one another outside there, the kind of decisions that are here, men and women who are married that are here, how we handle situation in our lives, we must be very careful because the God of heaven is our holy God and he desires every other moment that you remain holy. This is a very difficult one. But as difficult as it is, God wants you to maintain holiness. Israel was meant to be a holy nation of God. And Tamar knew that you don't need even to do anything dirty and defiled. The nation of God. The same applies to the church. Unaona squeezy. Chungaji tunafanya vituko kansani. Nakuja kwa madabau. Na ubiri. Na fraya. Na ruka juu. We don't have that. You should not stand there to condemn anybody. But we are saying. All of us have sinned. Before God. Yet we can go back to God. And seek for his grace. Because any of us can. Sin. Any of us. But we are saying. We must be very careful what we are doing. What you are about to come as is what it, lay your life before God. When you are being rebuked, sometimes listen to the rebuke. It may be painful, but simply listen to the rebuke. Amen. Amen. Are we together? Yes. And so we declare that the spirit of Anon will never be our. Amen. 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 The spirit of Ammon will never be our. Amen. Girls, I do have young girls here. 35, let me say 40 years old. I also talk about boys, but let me tell you, I've always said many times, these boys, I've said that, I've been in the And by the way, they'll give you everything. You actually prove on a coupe. Like you can go about a family. You can go about a coupe. And I can go about We don't need to do anything right now. We just need to be friends and wait until the right time. Why not see you? But I can go about a coupe. I don't know what that means actually. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Some of you seem to understand. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I 
say this. And I'm serious about this. They will tell you how good the inside of the box is. This box inside there is very good. Now we give a Now we will give it. Now we will give it. Now we will give it. Now we I don't know what's going to be inside there, but because of the cunningness of the devil, and the devil has never meant good for any of us, the moment he comes out, you will be surprised that the scene will happen. What he means, Ukibaki Kule Kama Messi, what happens? Open box. Ukodania? Ukodania? Now, Ukibaki Kule Kama Messi, what happens? Open box. Ukodania? Now, Ukibaki Kule Kama Messi, what happens? Man is a spirit. Man is a spirit. what your pastor is telling you. Amen. You will suffocate and you know the devil is always and I say, yeah, because he can run the run. I don't know if you can Yeah, then you can run the Man, I'm a mother because he can't get it. I don't know how Man, because he can't find it. But even men about to happen. Young men about to happen. Ladies are even more. Dangerous. The ladies are even more dangerous. Well, we can come your box. What are you going to do your box? But they will make sure that you don't die. What end up wake up? Mau for your box. Na kutoroka na kuenda kusikizana na wakinajona da kuingi na rafu na kujia wakufungua. Na wakufungua wata kuweka kwa ulimwengu. Wata kuanika. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the way they come, you know, they are very clever. The first thing, Dr. Tabata, they will always make sure, Papa, you know, Pastor, you know, we work very close. There's a lady who told me, Pastor, he maka, he spoke to me, he was a bit of genuine. If I don't get you, been praying for us, Pastor, I can't get you, I can't get you, I can't get This time round, and Pastor, of course, what I'm talking about, this time round, as he put, he spoke to me, he said, he said, he said, he said, I don't care about you, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, my friend, you don't want to go to the That's the time you know that you have to pay for fees, upkeep, and you know the pay. I don't know how much it is. You 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 don't know how much it is. So the trick of the devil is the same. So nobody can say a common no person, not all of us. I'm talking about those who are ungodly. Are you know what I'm saying? The ungodly one, they scheme evil. So I want to say, when you want to befriend one another, keep yourself clean to one another. Mwambia kwamba tungoje mpaka siku yetu ya mwi. Kama sasa anjula na nani. Na Brenda kama Sylvia na. Tukuja hapa and we make a declaration. Kwa nesu asifiwe. And men and women who are married, tafadhali umeo, na ukaole, na tosheka na doa ya, wacha kuranda rada kule, because choices have what? Wana sifiwe. Siyumi nadaka tuupili hapa. Because this is the dwelling of God. You can't be doing evil outside there and you want to come and defile. I'm not, tamara sema kwa ba, you cannot, we cannot keep defiling Israel, because Israel is the abode of God. Is my man. To call him shortly, Pastor. We need to come and pray for us. These are things that happen. They may not be happening in our midst, but these things are happening. I want to tell you, all of us, one of the most beautiful things in the world is to keep yourself pure before God. Amen? Pure before God. And even if you made a mistake a few days ago, our God is a faithful God. He can still forgive you. And so that we don't find ourselves in the story like this one that we have been reading today. Because of the lust of the flesh. Because of an evil mind. Because of a deceitful spirit. Because you want to satisfy yourself. I want to challenge us. Let us be clean before the Lord. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I want us to pray. I know this is a prayer that many of us will not be confident and comfortable to say, I want to step out. It takes courageous men and women who say, you know what, I don't care what the devil thinks, I don't want to walk the walk of Amnon. Because Amnon died a 
painful death. Amnon died a painful death. When we do wrong, God will expose us. God can give you all the room, can protect you, can warn you, will tell you everything. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. But when you keep, because what Amnon was doing was not new. It is something he had been doing. And when we keep doing evil, God will one day do what? Expose us. Trust you me. He will. Pastor, say something in prayer. You know, one of the things that the devil always does is that he always brings an enemy. You know, as I listen to Pastor and I listen to Amnon says, it is this woman. It reminded me back of the Garden of Eden. You know, it is this woman. That is the thing that the devil always does to us. He always brings division. He always makes us stand against one another. He always takes that which God had blessed, that which God has commissioned, that which God has instituted, that which God has established so that life can flow from it and always brings an enmity. And let me tell you, when you look at even, it doesn't matter where we are fighting at what level. We are always, the most basic wars in this world are always about this woman and this man. Immediately the devil brings an enmity between the man and the woman. Everything else flows from there to cause disaster. Think about it. Think about homes. Think about families. Think about institutions. It is this woman, it is this man. Wananza kustakiana, wananza kulaumiana, wananza kuona tofauti zao. Wananza kuona bile hawezi patana. Wananza kuona kwamba wewe ni mwanamke na wewe ni mwanaume. Wanawacha kuona wewe ni kiumbe cha Mungu. They stop seeing each other as a as a higher as a heir to the kingdom. You know, kama wewe ni mmoja wa wale waliopokea neema ya Bwana, kama vile pia mimi nimepokea hiyo neema. We are, we, are, we, are, we are the same. You know, I, I joke with Pastor and tell him, he was called to ministry long before me. I was called much, much later. In fact, some of those years, I was still in school when he was decided to serve. You know, but guess what? The same grace that called him those years ago is the same grace that called me. I quit on a grace, I come and I mean, I quit on a grace, I We are called by the same grace, the same God. And that God, is a God of unity. And where there is unity, God always commands a blessing. Which means where there is division, a curse is automatic. This woman, a curse becomes automatic. This man, a curse becomes automatic. And I want us to think about ourselves. I want us to think about our families. Because you know, sometimes when you talk about abuse of power, you think, I will abuse power when I become prime minister, when I become CEO, when I become this, when I become that, when I become the other. Let me tell you, even in the kitchen, if you're serving meat and you give yourself more than the other, that's abuse of power. It begins in the very basic of places. We all think that I have to be high up there to abuse power. You know, I have to have stolen millions so that it's abuse of power. Even when you get out of the matatu and it gives you change that is not your change and you start making noise about it, it is abuse of power. Abuse of power happens in the very small places that we sit in where we think it doesn't count. Because guess what? If we were faithful in the small places, we will be faithful in the higher offices. But if we are abusing the small offices, let me tell you, our colleague, our former colleague, Pastor Kenoti used to say, many of us are thieves minus opportunity. We you know we talk about officials of government doing one, two, three. Let me tell you, if some of us were in those positions, we would do worse. We would do us. And so I want us to come to a place of prayer. And I want us to come to a place of confession. And I want us to come to a place of truthfulness. You know, Jichunguze Mwenyewe. Where do you stand when it comes to power? Unangoja sikuite utakuwa ndio wakujue. But I also want us to say another prayer. There are 
There's some of us that have been abused by those that are in power. There's some of us that have been broken by those that are in power. And we have stories. Pastor can tell you his stories of being abused by the person who was powerful ahead of him. I can tell you mine, and so can every other person here give us a story. But maybe you're here, and because of the abuse that you went through, it has made you desolate. And unlike, unlike Tamar, you don't even have a brother who gives you refuge. You have nowhere to go. And so you're just, you're roaming, you're wondering, you're wondering, you're wondering. And you're wondering, what did I do wrong? Because Tamar had done nothing wrong. All Tamar did was be faithful. All Tamar did was be trusting. And so maybe you're here and you've been broken because you've been abused by someone in power. Let me tell you, Absalom said nothing and did nothing. But let me, and I'm, 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 I'm not saying this out of context that I'm saying we, we eventually revenge and everything, but I am saying that the vengeance belongs to the Lord. Um, Absalom did nothing, but Absalom revenged for his sister. The Lord always fights our battle. The Lord always fights our battle. Always. It may take time. It may seem like you have been forgotten. But the Lord always fights your battles. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter who it is. Even if they look like they are making progress, even if it looks like you have been forgotten, even if it looks like your file has been closed, let me tell you, the Lord, the Lord registers. And so I want to pray for two people today. I first want to pray for us that may have been in the process of being abusive because we have power. But I want to pray for those that have been abused. More because those rarely get the prayers. And more because those are the ones that need to be reminded that they are not forgotten and the Lord loves them. To we have a song for that. Pastor, before you pray, can you sing that song that leads Pastor to help him help her pray? It's a song that I request them to sing.
to get lost in and allows us to not see who we are is shame. And I want to ask that if you're sitting there and you want to take a step and you want to walk forward and you want to break the shame, whatever it is, just come. Feel free, come. Because the Lord is here. There is healing today. There is healing. There is breaking of bondages. There is breaking of those things that have held us back. There is breaking of the pain that has held you back. Nobody is going to need to be told what it is that your shame is. It is not written on the back of your head, by the way. Neither is it written on your forehead. Unfortunately, it sits on your heart. And so you're the only one that knows it. And so I ask if you want, you can come boldly. Come. Come. We have space here. We have pastors that will pray with you. Come. If you want to walk in boldness, if you want to walk in freedom, if you want to walk in liberty, feel free to come. Father, this morning we come to you, O oh Lord. Father, this morning we come to you because we have gone through life. Father, we have gone through life. We have seen things. Father, we have carried things in our hearts. Father, things that have made us sick physically. Father, things that have made it impossible for us to see you as you are, oh Lord. Because we see ourselves as hopeless. We see ourselves as helpless, oh Lord. And Father, because we stand broken, we have believed the lie that you see us broken. Father, you see us healed. Father, you see us delivered. Father, we stand boldly because, Lord, we know that your very names are who you are. And there is nothing, there is no name that you call yourself, that you do not have the capacity, that you do not have the intention to back it up with action, oh Lord. So, Father, when you call us, when you call us, because you are redeemer. When you call us healed, you are healer. Yes. When you call us delivered, you are delivered. Yes. And so, Father, we come. We come. Father, where we have been, the abusers. Father, we confess. Father, we confess. Father, we confess because we had no knowledge. We had no intention because sometimes we only abuse because it is what we have been seeing. It is what we thought leadership was. It is what we saw in our families. It is what we believed being in authority meant, oh Lord. But Father, from this day henceforth, Lord, we confess and we desire that in every position of leadership, in every position of authority we sit, oh Lord. Father, may we be like you May we be servant leaders. May we be those that have a heart for your children. Where we have heart people because of our style of leadership. Father, we confess. Father, we ask for forgiveness, O oh Lord. Father, we have broken people where we have not spoken life. Father, where we have hurt people because we have been heartless leaders, oh Lord. Father, we confess and we ask, oh Lord, that Father, you give us a new heart of leaders as leaders, oh Lord. Father, give us a heart of flesh as leaders where we have had a heart of stone. And Father, remind us that leadership is not title, but Father, leadership is about every position that you have put us to serve your people. Because Lord, people are important to you. You love people more than anything, oh Lord. Father, you die for people. And Father, when we abuse people, oh Lord, we go contrary to your word. So Father, where we have hurt people, oh Lord, forgive us, oh Lord. Forgive us, oh Lord. Forgive us, oh Lord. Father, where we have been hurt. Father, where we have been broken. Where we have walked in pain. Where we have cried tears, oh Lord. Father, would you comfort us? Would your grace be sufficient, oh Lord, even to forgive those that hurt us, oh God? Father, where we have walked in unforgiveness and resentment and bitterness, oh Lord. Father, may you may we find healing. Father, would you help us, oh Lord? Would you help us?
help us here, Jesus? Would you help us, oh Lord? Father, would you remind us, oh Lord? Would you remind us, oh Lord, that you are our shepherd? That we are called by your name. That, Father, even those things that we have been called by, Lord, that have authority over us, are nothing compared to the name that you give us, oh God. Father, you call us your children. You call us your you call us the sheep of your flock. You call us our deliverer, oh Lord. And Father, you are our fighter. Father, where we have been hurt, where we have thought and considered revenge in our hearts, remind us, oh Lord, that you are the God who sees, the God who hears, and the God who acts. We trust you, oh Lord, because your hand is not weak. In that name, we find refuge, we find comfort, and we find life, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. The Lord bless you. Because I push your pastor.
Jesus for the expansion of your church and the growth of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. We bless your name and we honor you. Amen. 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 And so for those who are watching us, it's been a wonderful time to be in the presence of God and we will wish to bid you by till next Sunday. May the Lord bless you, may he keep you, may his face shine upon you, may he bless you with your thousand generation in the name of Jesus. We bless you with the blessings of our Father in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 